Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Christian and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in software development from Western Governors University in February of 2023. Today I'm going to talk about how I got hired as a software engineer after graduating. I got a job as a software engineer at a reputable mid-sized defense company. I won't be disclosing the name for now since I am yet to start, but be assured that it is a solid offer with an above market rate, excellent benefits, and remote work style. I primarily want to focus on helping you guys land a job whether you've graduated from WGU or another university. I also got two other offers so stay tuned and I'll let you know how I got there. I'm going to start from the beginning of my journey at WGU. I enrolled in November of 2021 so it took me a little less than a year and a half to complete the program. I transferred in 15 general ed credits from a community college which helped me to complete the program a little bit faster. If you're interested in learning more about my WGU experience, I have a wealth of resources so please check that out on my WGU playlist. I wasn't aware that many people applied to internships six months to a year prior to the start date. Since I accelerated in WGU, I didn't get the chance to take advantage of my status as a student to get a typical internship. This put me at a disadvantage since nowadays entry level positions require internship or full time experience. If they don't say that they require it, people who do have experience are probably applying to the role and lack of experience makes it so you don't stand out. Besides, I needed a full time job, not a summer internship. After all, I took a risk quitting my full time job as a restaurant manager to pursue my studies full time and get hired as a software engineer. Back then, I had many misconceptions surrounding the process of getting a tech job. I started doing a ton of leak code problems every day and I got pretty decent at them after a few weeks. I started by struggling with easy, easy problems to being able to do them relatively quickly and having the ability to solve medium and hard problems. I also created a couple of new projects. I got a couple of interviews but nothing really that promising. I did get an interview with a small startup company but I failed it. And here's what I learned. Don't focus on quanti quantity of projects. Rather, focus on quality of projects. Go further than full stack CRUD application. Integrate REST APIs, add caching, do something unique that challenges you and requires you to learn something new. Be able to explain your project inside out and don't have any bugs. If I had known this, there was a decent chance that I could have gotten an offer from that startup. Not all companies do leak code style problems in interviews. In fact, if you're not applying to big corporations, most of them probably won't have that in the interview process. I speak from experience, so take my word with a grain of salt. Others can disagree with this statement. I still strongly believe in the importance of mastering data structures and algorithms and leak code. However, it will not carry you across the finish line. In my experience, during the technical interview, I was mostly asked conceptual questions about DSA, object-oriented programming, and general computer science material. So make sure to be really solid on these concepts. Additionally, I was asked a lot about my projects, hence why I mentioned knowing your projects inside out. You need to sell yourself and make yourself look good. So get to the point where you can be reasonably proud of what you've made in your projects, and this will be reflected in your interview, naturally. So after I learned those important lessons, I still wasn't getting enough interview opportunities from employers, even though I was treating my job search like a full-time job and applying to hundreds of different positions. I felt like giving up and going into tech sales, but the voice in the back of my head told me that I went through all of this hard work to get my degree and that I should be seeing this completely through. That is when I found out about pre-intern. Pre-intern is a boot camp style program that offers educational resources and mentorship to help you get a software engineer, um, to help you as a software engineer candidate. It costs about uh, $1,400. However, the main advantage of this boot camp is that they take you on as an unpaid intern at their separate nonprofit company after completing the boot camp portion. I have a video that goes into much more detail on this program. It was worth every penny to me because I was able to put this experience as a software engineer um, on my resume. I was able to quantify the impact of my work and talk about the features that I developed in my interviews. Um, I took advantage of this quite a bit um, when I was doing my interviews. And this made me a competitive applicant to other graduates who had the ability 
to have a typical internship um, if they went to a you know four-year university a state school or whatever and they were able to do internships during the summer so after starting this internship I was able to get more interviews it still wasn't easy keeping in mind that it's you know 2023 and the job markets really competitive I went through several interview processes and made it to a few final rounds I was applying to companies all over the United States in all different kinds of industries, including tech, finance, healthcare, defense. For the most part, my experience was pretty terrible. I got ghosted several times, even once after completing a third round interview where they made me jump through all these hoops, such as taking a cognitive test. I got a decent amount of leads through talking with recruiters at staffing companies. So if you're struggling to find leads for interviews, I would recommend giving that a try because it could be promising. Unexpectedly, it was a connection from my boot camp that helped me to get a job. Part of the boot camp included mentorship sessions, and so I was getting mentored each week. About halfway through my 10 mentorship sessions, my mentor brought up applying to the company that he works at. He said that he saw potential in me and that he doesn't say this to all of his mentees. So I'm not saying that you should go and sign up for this boot camp and try to get my mentor to get you a job. It's a possibility with some of the mentors. However, it really just came down to me being in the right place at the right time since they were hiring. And I had spent over six months at that point trying to perfect myself as a software engineer candidate and doing a lot of work to get to that moment. Um, he made the introduction and I was able to get through the interview process. Um, at the same time, um, a, a couple of leads from the interviews I got from applying to jobs on the Handshake platform had turned into offers as well. One was from um, Wiley Edge, the consulting firm which does paid training and job placement. It's not like Reviture or Dev10 where they make you sign a contract where you have to pay to get out it's at will employment and they place you at one of their clients, which I believe are mostly big banks like American Express or Capital One. The catch is, is that the pay is below market. It wasn't a bad option, but it wasn't nearly as good as the option I ended up, the offer I ended up getting. The other was for a small company and it was a hybrid role in cybersecurity. And, and also just a quick note on, on Wiley Edge. If, if you're out there and you're applying to jobs and you aren't getting lucky and it's been a while and you are willing to relocate um, and you have some flexibility uh, with the pay then I would recommend looking into that because the uh, the barrier to entry isn't as high as uh, other big tech companies but you still get the same valuable experience working at a, a big bank I mean Capital One or American Express or um, or Chase, I mean, those are all reputable companies and you'd get really good experience working there. So it's really it's really uh, not a bad option. And if you're struggling to find something, I would, I would definitely look into that. Uh, so for the offer that I ended up going with, I won't reveal any identifying information about the interview. However, I will say that the advice that I gave earlier um, about the projects and conceptual knowledge of CS uh, rang true. It was definitely the most challenging interview I've had out of all of them, and therefore it was the most rewarding when I was when I was able to get that offer. Uh, I hope that you that after hearing about my experience, that you can glean some insights that will assist you in the search. Just know that it's completely possible to get a job, even though it's challenging at this time. I know others who simply graduated from their university and got a job a couple of months later. It's possible, although in my opinion, unlikely due to the competitive nature of the job market. I would really advise trying to make yourself stand out as an applicant to help you uh, get and succeed in those interviews. If I could give any more advice, it would be um, practice for both technical and behavioral interviews prior to applying for jobs and do it continuously while applying to jobs. If you're job searching for a while, your interview skills can get rusty fast. My advice would be to practice the behavioral interviews after getting invited to the interview uh, so that you know which company you need to do research about to succeed in that interview since many of the questions are company specific. 
practice with other people, whether it be a friend, family member, or another person online who's looking to practice as well. Have projects that stand out. So go the extra mile with your projects. Deploy your projects and make sure that they are publicly available and easily accessible. This is good for multiple reasons. It shows you are proud of your projects, pushes you to make them better since you're showing them publicly, and you also learn how to use um, uh, Amazon Web Services or Azure or you know whatever platform you end up going with for the deployment of the program. Um, and then try to network. Not all of you will go down the same path as I did. Not all of you will have a mentor. If you don't, you should try to find one. There are many people doing it on LinkedIn for free since a lot of people like to give back to the community. Uh, you don't have to be part of a boot camp to get one. Uh, of course, networking expands you know, well beyond talking with mentors. Um, so don't discount your connections and the connections of your friends or family and try to leverage them to the best of your ability because it could be your best shot at getting a job. All right, well, I know that this is all I have uh, for today. I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that it possibly inspired some of you. Um, I made this video in hopes that you could watch it and maybe learn from some of the mistakes that I did so you don't have to take more than six months to get a job. Um, so uh, if you have any um, questions or comments, please feel free to leave that in the comment section. However, uh, please be respectful and don't use your opinion as the ultimate truth. We all have different experiences and opinions, so please keep that in mind when participating in the comment section. Additionally, I would appreciate it if you could like this video and if you enjoyed it, I would also ask that you subscribe for more related content. I'm going to be posting more videos like this and videos that will help you land the tech job that you're looking for. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.